Maurice Jones Drew, NFL Network broadcaster, played for a decade in the NFL, eight for the Jags and one for the Raiders, and a three time Pro Bowler is joining us this morning. By the way, it looks like, not that the Jags are a fascinating national topic, but it does appear they're sort of tanking. When you were there, they were viable and they won games. It, it's, I, I can't say tanking, Maurice, because it's hard to tank in football, but it does look like, um, how about this? They're looking to next year's draft. Is that fair? <laughs> I, I would say they're rebuilding. Um, I, I think um, in business we, we call it pivoting, yeah. and it happens at, at a lot of different networks. It happens in a lot of different businesses. You decide to go one direction. Um, in that direction, they were getting a lot of talented players, a lot of personalities in that locker room. Um, those players and, and that staff got them to the AFC Championship game. Uh, they swung for the fences the next couple of years, didn't make it, and now they're going to pivot into a different direction. Um, it, it does suck, though, being a Jags fan when you're you're that close, right? Uh, and you come back, and, and you know, and now you're part of a rebuild again. And in my career, or early on, we were winning games, and I was part of a couple of rebuilds because we weren't winning uh, consistently. And it, it just it, – it's disheartening at some points, but you just hope that um, – they hit on some guys and that they can keep, you know, building and, and keeping their guys there, which is the most important. It's hard to uh, win games when you draft in the top 10, um, what, eight or nine years or 10 years in a row, and only two of those guys are on your roster. So Cam Newton, most believe, is more talented than Teddy Bridgewater or Nick Foles. But Nick Foles has a job. Marcus Mariota has a job. Case Keenum keeps finding work. Teddy Bridgewater, who I like more than most people, gets a starting job, and Cam doesn't have a gig. Now, I, I, have, a, I have a theory on it. For years and years, I was told by sources inside the building, sometimes he was distracted. Uh, sometimes he was a little dramatic. He was not the easiest pl- guy to coach. That's why Ron Rivera went to Washington and traded up to get Kyle, his backup, Kyle Allen. So, but does it surprise you that Cam Newton, a former MVP, there's there's no job for him? None. Doesn't appear to be any market. Yeah, I'm very surprised. Uh, and for me, it's it it comes down to, um, like, do you want to win or not? And and and, and, and to be quite frank with you, Colin, talent coaches don't win games. Coaches, you can get out coached and lose games, but. To be honest, it's those players on the field that win games. And how can you tell for a franchise or uh, your fans that you're doing your best when one of the best players are out there and you don't have a quarterback or you're playing with a guy that, you know, may not be the best um, and you have a better option out there? And so uh, I I believe Cam Newton will end up finding a job. Uh, The last two years, I know that everyone's going to talk about the last two years, but one, he's playing, he played through a, a shoulder injury for his team. And yet we don't talk about that. And then last year he played with a Liz Frank uh, injury, which I had as a player, um, which is arguably one of the toughest injuries to play with. And, and I watched him battle with his teammates the first couple of weeks until he couldn't battle anymore. And so to say that he's uh, not a team player, like some have said, or he's about self, that doesn't show me that. But those two instances right there don't show me that. He played hurt for his team to try to help his team. So what, so what does it tell you when Ron Rivera has no interest? And, and by the way, Sean McDermott, good young coach at Buffalo, no interest. He'd be a perfect well, back. But what does it tell well, you? Well, I think those teams have, you know, obviously Ron Rivera's going into the Redskins where you have Dwayne Haskins, and it possibly it may be he needs to see what Dwayne can do first. Yeah. There's other, but there's other teams out. I mean, the Patriots are obviously the obvious team, and the Chicago Bears, like you mentioned, teams that don't have a quarterback. Um I would even say the Pittsburgh Steelers, to be quite frank with you, should look into having Cam Newton because the fact that you don't know what Big Ben is, is he going to come back being Big Ben? And the fact that, you know, he's been banged up as well. And so uh, there's a lot of teams out there that I think should be taking a look at Cam, some with quarterbacks that, you know, aren't the the greatest quality of starter. But, you know, they're getting paid as such, and, and it makes sense. But for me, it comes down to if you want to win games, you're going to get talented players, and, and as a coach, you know, I, I, I firmly believe a coach is not just a play caller. A coach is a manager of personalities and expectations. A coach is a mentor. A coach is a teacher. A coach is uh, a therapist. You have to have all those things. as being, You just can't coach and call play. That's not what this is about. And so the ones who get that, 
they're always successful, and you see that throughout the, certain careers and certain trajectories of franchises. Those coaches understand that. The ones that just want to call plays and and do those other things that that's not that's not a part of that's not that's not you just it's not like playing Madden where I can just call plays and pick button X. You have to be uh, you have to manage expectations and personalities. And Cam Newton is a big personality, yes, but he's also a winner. He's a guy that took a, a Carolina roster offensively that wasn't the best to a fifteen and one record with a with a, a really good defense to the Super Bowl. But I think Cam can get back to that and play at that level personally. You know, it's uh, the NBA, stars run the league, and in baseball, they have eight- and ten-year contracts. The NFL, stars can get cut. It's the reality of the business model. Now, the good news for the NFL is that gives owners and the commissioners more leverage. And I look at the NFL right now, and, you know, Roger Goodell saying, no comments on the season, it's five months out, don't speculate, you don't have any idea, I don't have any idea, stop the speculation. And I look at the NFL and I think to myself, if players are given the option, you're going to play through this virus or, and, and get paid or you're not going to get paid. My gut feeling is football is uniquely built where the organization has more leverage over the professional athlete than baseball, international soccer, NBA. I think there'll be an NFL season. In a locker room full of players, if the virus was in a second wave, you know, you're a young pro athlete. It's not as vigorous as it was a month ago, but it, there's some cases out there. How do you think the average NFL player would address it and think about it? And, and how cautious would they be or would they want to play? Well, I think it depends on, you know, the age for sure and the, and the security that the, uh, uh, whichever player has, right? So if I'm a player that's been battling to stay on rosters and, and you know I'm I'm you know at the bottom of the roster I want to play if I'm a young player I want to play I want to get out there if I'm a, a superstar or a veteran that has security I want to make sure things are safe before I go out there right um and so I believe there'll be a season um and I again I I think that the league is going to handle it the way they always have they're always going to hope for the best but prepare for the worst and, and so they're making sure right now that like, they put the schedule out tonight at 8 p.m. on NFL Network that it's going to be the full season. And then they'll make adjustments as they go forward. Um, and, I mean, that's the only way you can handle this pandemic right now because you don't, you just don't know. Early when this thing started, it, was, it wasn't that big of a deal. And then it became a big, a big deal. And, you know, people have been, you know, stuck in their houses and not allowed to really go out and do a lot of things here um, for the last couple months. And so – all you can do as a player um, is be prepared for whatever may happen and voice your concerns and, 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 and make sure when you voice those that the PA backs you and voices those as well, and then they come to agreement with the NFL and they make it work. Yeah. It's, um, it's, it's such a unique time. Are you in California right now? Uh, I'm actually in Florida right now. How is it in Florida right now? Because they're opening stuff up. What, what is the sense you get? Uh, well, well, I, I, I'm down in South Florida, so it's not. It, it's similar to California, where they're, they've locked a lot of it down still, and, and it's because again, you know, you're, you know, Miami's, uh, Fort Lauderdale, those are the big tourist attractions, yeah. cities, uh, and so they want to make sure. And you have to be, you know, sometimes you have to make sure. And I and, and I was in Los Angeles right before this thing kind of blew up, um, and so you know, those places that have a lot of people that are close, like New York and these major. Uh, San Francisco, these major cities, they have to they have to do you know bigger precautions than I think you know small town uh, places in Middle America or anywhere, right? Um, so Florida is kind of it's kind of different because the top of Florida, northern Florida to about uh, Orlando is open. You can do whatever you want. South Florida, you're locked down. Yeah, so restaurants aren't open and things like that. And it, you know you just have to try to find. I always tell people because I I have I have two family members who have passed away from the coronavirus or effects of it. Um, and you just have to, you know, take care of yourself. Understand that this is serious. You know, I, I, I've heard all the different things about it. At the end of the day, people are dying. And, you know, we have to make sure that we take care of ourselves as best we can. Sorry to hear that, Maurice Jones-Drew. Uh, love having you on. NFL Network tonight has their schedule release. I've always, I've always enjoyed the schedule release. I'm kind of a wonky NFL fan. I love all this stuff. <laughs> So, uh, Maurice, thanks for coming on the show. No problem, Colin. Also, can I? I, I just want to tell all your listeners. Um, 
I've been doing IG lives. They can follow me on um, Instagram at m.jonesdrew32. And I've been doing IG lives with a bunch of players, teams, uh, and then answering a lot of questions as well. Just because, again, we're all at home and everyone's trying to create content. Yeah. Just to give fans more of an insight if they love to follow me and, and be able to, you know, when I do, I'll start up on Monday again. Uh, when, you know, if they want to answer questions or have questions answered, uh, I have no problem doing that. Thanks, man. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.